compares himself uh, with this tax collector. Here is a man tonight. Uh, he felt that if anyone is righteous, uh, if anyone had the right to get into heaven, uh, it had to be yours truly. Can I say tonight, church, sometimes we look at others and we compare ourselves to others. We say things and we even think things that, you know what, I'm better than them. Why? Because, you know, what? at least I'm not a murderer. At least I'm not a rapist. At least I'm not a robber. At least I'm not all these negative and horrible things. And we may not say it sometimes, but in our minds, we, we think things that we are better than them. And what we are doing, church, is we're going and comparing ourselves with people. Can I stop and say this tonight, church? That is a wrong comparison. Because if you're going to go and compare... Go and compare yourself to Jesus. See, when it comes to Jesus Christ in our church, when, 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 when Jesus Christ is the standard, we get very nervous and for good reason. We are told in Hebrews chapter 7, verse 26, for such a high priest was fitting for us. Now listen to what the Bible says about this high priest called Jesus, who is holy, harmless, undefiled, separate from sinners, and has become higher than the heavens. Think about that. Let me say it again. He's holy. He's harmless. He's undefiled. He's separate from sinners church. That cannot be said about any person on this planet other than Jesus Christ tonight. Other than the son of God tonight. The Bible tells us that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. I want you to think about that tonight. Because I want you to compare yourself with somebody today. And the person I want you to compare tonight is not the person sitting next to you. The person I want you to compare tonight is not the person that lives with you. The person I want you to compare tonight is not the person on the bus with you or works with you or maybe is even married to you tonight. I want you to compare your life with Christ tonight. Here is Peter. Peter is not catching fish all night. And the Bible tells us he meets the Lord Jesus Christ. And Jesus instructs him because Peter helps the Lord by giving the Lord his boat so he can preach to the masses. Jesus instructs him and says, Peter, I want to take your net and cast it on the other side for a great catch. And the Bible lets us know that Peter ends up getting this phenomenal catch. But can I say tonight, church, amen, that in his heart, Peter compared himself to Jesus. Peter was probably looking at Jesus and probably thinking, what makes you better than me? Peter probably looks at Jesus and thought, you're not that much older than I am. Peter looks at Jesus and probably thought to himself, what does he think he knows? He's just a preacher. I'm a fisherman. He compared himself to Jesus, but when he saw what Christ could do, all he could say was, depart from me. I'm a sinful man. We can talk today about Isaiah. Isaiah is a prophet. He's the best of all men. And he probably compared himself with those he was commissioned to reach. But when he saw the Lord Jesus Christ, he realized tonight, amen, what he really was like. Isaiah 6 and 5, the Bible says, so I said, woe unto me, for I am undone. Do you know what that means? It means I'm busted. It means all the facade has been pulled aside. Woe unto me, I am undone because I am a man of unclean lips and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Listen tonight, church. You may have a high opinion of yourself, but when you compare yourself with Christ, you're going to get the right opinion of yourself tonight. Listen, church, I want you to compare yourself to Christ. And if you do it, and do it sincerely, and do it honestly, you discovered what I have discovered, and what I believe many saved, born again, children of God have discovered, and that is in our church, we are sinners in the sight of a holy God. So let's consider misplaced trust. Because when Jesus spoke this parable, there was a lot of people there that day that heard it. There was a large audience of people. The place was packed. But in that audience, he was aiming for a particular group of people. In that audience, you can say tonight, church, he had a target audience within an audience. When he spoke to them, he spoke to them about the cross. The chapter before, chapter Luke 17, verse 25, the Bible says, but first, he, this is Christ, must suffer many things and be rejected by this generation. He's speaking about the cross. 
He's speaking about going to die for their sins. If you carry or read it, you see it yourself. And what you need to see tonight is ch this church. They were looking ahead. They were looking forward so, to something that had not happened. Tonight, we are looking from, you can say, back. We, are, we, we look back and we know the cross took place. We know that Christ died for our sins. We know that he was crucified. We know that he rose again on the third day like he said he did. We know that he suffered and he died for our sins. But also, church, he didn't just speak about the cross and Calvary. He spoke about his coming. He spoke about in chapter 17, we see the days of Noah. And in the days of Noah, it was about the judgment of God coming and people were living their lives as if God, amen, or you could say as if there was no God, they were just going about everyday business, going on with their lives, and not thinking about God, not thinking about one day they're going to stand before God and give an account of their lives, they're just going by their business, they're going shopping, they're looking for jobs, they're buying clothes, they're mingling with friends, they're doing whatever they're doing, they're not thinking about God at all, and Jesus makes this statement, he says this is exactly how it's going to be like just before he comes, that people are just going to be getting on their lives and doing whatever they're doing with no thought about him, no thought about judgment, no thought about what's coming. And he says it's going to be like the days of Noah. Then he mentions the days of Lot. Can we be real tonight? The days of Lot was primarily known for one thing. And we are seeing it rampant today. It's all over the place. This is what the days of Lot was known for. It was known for rampant immorality, especially of one kind. And we have seen it like never before. All over the world, it's happening. All over the world, it is prevalent tonight. See, when I look at all this, and I consider all that has happened in our world today, church, how many know Jesus is coming soon? He told them about Calvary. He told them about the cross. He told them about his coming. And in spite of that, church, we come to this parable, this comparison parable. In verse 9, he says he spoke this parable to some who trusted in themselves that they were righteous and despised others. In spite of being told about the cross, in spite of being told about his coming. Listen to my church. There were some people who were there after hearing all of that who trusted in themselves. They were not trusting in God. They were trusting in me. They're not trusting the fact that he was going to go and pay for their sins. They were trusting in what have I already done and how I live my life and who I am as a human being. So here's the question tonight, church. Are you trusting in yourself? See, there were people there. Instead of taking heed of Jesus' words, they were comparing. Tonight, church, we are constantly comparing. And we are comparing because it makes us feel good about ourselves. But one of the problems with comparisons is it cause us to look down on other people. Do you know men compare? Men compare by sizing each other up. I can take him. He you know that. And what we do is from time to time, you could be talking to another man. You're talking to another man and you're talking, 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 talking. Yeah, 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 bro. Yeah, yeah, bro, bro. Yeah, 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 yeah. And we do this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, my guy, you're right, you're right, you're right, you're right. And in his mind, he's doing that to see, is he hard? Or soft? That if he slaps me, his hand just melts. Or if he slaps me, my face shatters. He's, he's sizing you up. He's, he's, he's checking you out. But do you know women compare as well? If I'm ladies, you could be worse than the men. <laughs> when I was working in a place called PCHA, PCHA Patent Church Households Association, it was taken over by a group called Genesis. 
and I'm in this place and I'm, and, 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 and I, I, I got married, recently got married. Uh, I got to, I've, I've like, you know, I was probably married for about a year. I left the job before and I came to this and I'm sitting by this desk and on this desk, I put a picture of my wife there and it's a picture of our wedding day, just her and she's got a wedding dress on. And, and let me say something, your wedding day is when you are at your best. I mean, it's when you are, mm, right? I probably put my wife there to ward off the evil spirits, put it right there. <laughs> <laughs> Put it right there. And every man that would come say, ah, is that your wife? Well, she's beautiful. You're a lucky man. That's what they say. Every woman, and I kid you not, every woman. So that's her. <laughs> Without fail. So that's her. Like Pastor Gabriel say, hmm. That's what they say. Without fail. Without fail. And what they're doing, they're sizing her up. Sometimes they'll stand by my desk and talk to me and they're looking at her picture and like. <laughs> I don't mean, what, what's wrong with what? Remember, I like boxing. And uh, I was watching this, this uh, interview with this boxer one time. And uh, <clears throat> he was telling, he was talking to this, uh, this, this interviewer. And uh, he's actually a world champion. And he, the interview was saying, well, I was speaking to one of, the, you want, one of your competitors and he told me that he was sizing you, that, um, uh, uh, he was sizing you up when he saw you. And, and, and he goes, when he told me that I never saw that, I never noticed that. And he, said, and he asked him, did you know? He goes, yeah, I knew, I knew. We, all, we, we know when we've been sized up by our opponents. We, there's certain things they do. There's certain things they behave that we know they're checking us out. And nobody could tell, the interview could not tell, the audience could not tell, but the boxers knew that they were kind of sizing up each other. So tonight, church, people may not know that you are comparing yourself with them. But God knows. Yes. God sees it very clearly. It's not hidden from him. It's not like, you know, what are they doing? He, he, he knows. So can I ask you again, are you trusting in yourself that you're okay? Are you trusting in yourself that you're all right? In 2013 in Tokyo, Japan, <coughs> paramedics, they, or you could say the ambulance, they arrived at a scene of an accident in, in April uh, uh, the 24th. And there's a 50-year-old man, he, 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 he was determined uh, uh, not to go to the hospital. And after checking him over, the police didn't notice any wounds <coughs> or any serious wounds. So they allowed the man to return home untreated and basically recorded the accident was, you know, it was a minor a traffic accident resulting from a minor property damage. As an act of courtesy, the man who had hit the other man with his car, escorted the man home, <coughs> took it home, and he was pleading with him, listen, you need to go to the hospital and go and get yourself checked and just man well, i'm okay i'm good i'm fine I'm, I'm all good not a problem he goes to his house this was april the 24th two months later police received the report of an unpleasant smell coming from that man's flat when they finally got to the flat they found the man and he's dead in fact, they found a decaying body. And when they did the autopsy, the autopsy results, it suggested that the man died of a functional disorder of the brain, listen tonight, which was, the, was caused by a serious blow to the head. And it was directly linked to the accident that happened two months ago. And they concluded that due to the severity of his injuries, that pro the probability that this man died within 24 hours of the accidents was extremely high. Church, when you think you're all right, you could be in a very dangerous place. You think all is well. All could be worse or bad, you can say. See, I've said all that, say this in that church, the wrong way to approach God is by our good works. 
Because people who try to come to God by their good works are often comparing themselves with others and not God. Because here are two men, they're going, you could say, to church. And we may have a problem comparing ourselves with Christ. But many times we need to compare ourselves with these men. We need to go and compare ourselves with these two men. We first meet the Pharisee. Here's this Pharisee tonight. The Pharisee had a list of things that he did not do. But also tonight, church, he had a list of things that he did do. He says things like, you know, I don't rip people off. I'm, I'm a model citizen. I don't, I don't cheat on my wife. That's a good man. But also he had a list of things that he did do. I tithe. I pray. This was a good man on paper. He was a religious man. He went beyond, you could say, what was asked of him. He was a praying man. He was a fasting man. He was a giving man. But listen to that, church. This man was a deluded man tonight. He was deluded because when he looked at what he didn't do, and when he looked at what he did do, he came to this conclusion. I thank God that I'm not like other men. Let me tell you something tonight. Comparison fuels self-righteousness. See, we all can find things on the outward that we, we that, 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 uh, of other people that is more wicked than we are. What do I mean to that? When you compare yourself to an axe murderer, you look like a hero. Because outwardly, this man is a killer. He's doing all these crazy things. But if we look on the other way tonight, it's, we can also find people who are far better than we are. It was C.A. Spurgeon that said this word. He says, the greatest enemy to human soul is the self-righteous spirit which makes men look to themselves for salvation. So let me ask you this. If someone was to ask you, what is going to get you into heaven? Do you have a list of things you don't do and a list of things you do do? Do you have a list? Here is a man that was full of pride. And pride is rebelling against God because pride attributes to self, honor, and glory that belongs to God alone. In this man's prayer, he mentions God once and mentions I five times. He's full of himself. He's impressed with himself so much so. Verse 11 tells us he's praying to himself. You know, one thing I read about prayer tonight, this is so true tonight. When we pray, we're either praying to be heard by ourselves, we're either praying to be heard by others, or we're praying to be heard by God. Period. There are people who, who pray just they like they hear their voice. The others, they are praying so others can hear. But the others who come before God, God, I need your ears. God, I need your attention. God, I need you to move upon the situation tonight. And one of the things that pride will do tonight, that pride sees faults in others that is hard for it to see in itself. Here is David. David is confronted by the prophet Nathan. And Nathan begins to speak to him a parable and tell him it was a man who had a uh, 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 one ewe lamb and he loved this ewe lamb and another man who had many ewe lambs and the man who had many ewe lambs saw the man who had the one ewe lamb and he took the man who had the one he took his one away from him and, and he violated it and that Nathan turns to him and says what should be done to this man and as David is hearing the story of this man who had many and he takes from the man who has one he took the one he had away from him Nate, David is incensed he's angry he's vexed this man should die this man, where is he? I'm the king. I will pass the law right now. Tell me. And David, oh, David goes, oh, really? You're the man. It's easy for us to see numbers. It's a different story when it comes to ourselves tonight. So let's close look at what matters. Because we now come to the publican or <coughs> the tax collector. Tax collectors during this time, they were hated 
by the general public. They, had, they, they would rip off people. They were employed by Rome in order to take the taxes from the people. And maybe Rome would say, I want you to take, uh, uh, for example, let's say four pounds. Uh, uh, it's your night tonight, four pounds from Philip. Well, if I'm a tax collector, I'm going to come to Philip and say, well, Philip, uh, Rome says I should take uh, uh, eight pounds from you. When really Rome has asked for four. But I'm going to get my cut on top of that, double, right? So people knew this, but people could do nothing and they, they would hate them. They, they, they despise them. They are ungodly. They are, they are, they are rip off. They are traitors because again, they are, they were Jewish people employed by Rome. So now they're, they're, they're seen as you're a traitor. You're, 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 you're doing this against your own brother. They hide by Rome, but also they were loved by only by Rome. And the Bible tells about this task list, a couple of things. Number one, he's standing afar off. He's not even entering. He's by the door. He wouldn't even look up. He wouldn't even raise his head. He felt so ashamed. He felt so unworthy. And the Bible says he beat his chest. That is a sign of sorrow. That's a sign, amen, of, 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 of grief. That is a sign of shame. So tonight, think about this, church. When you go and compare, who are you more like? Are you more like the Pharisee or the tax collector? See, it's just like Jesus to make the bad guy the good guy and the good guy the bad guy. Because we see in this man's prayer, this tax collector's prayer, that he needed the mercy of God. He said, God, have mercy upon me, a sinner. Church, listen tonight. When we get a true look at who Jesus is, and, we and when we compare ourselves to him, we see very quickly that our righteousness, as the Bible says, is like filthy rags compared to the righteousness of God. We see that in ourselves, church, that we don't measure up. Because when we go and measure ourselves against another fallen and another desperate person tonight, it does not make you look better. But I'll say this tonight, church, it doesn't matter that you're better than average. What matters tonight is your relationship with God. And there's two things we see from this that should help us. Number one tonight, when it's all said and done, it is what God says about you that matters. The Pharisee is spoken. I'm not an adulterer. I tithe. I'm not an extortioner. I'm not like this guy. But in verse 14, Jesus speaks. And it's what Jesus says that matters. It is what Jesus says that makes all the difference. There is a powerful account in the Gospel of John <clears throat> by a woman who is caught in adultery. She is caught by, the, by all these men. They drag her to the feet of Jesus Christ. And they have stones, they're ready to stone her to death. And they say to Jesus, Jesus, we have caught this woman in, in, in adultery in the very act. The law says she should be stoned to death. What do you say? And I have no doubt in their mind, they are comparing themselves to this woman. That we are clean, that we have obeyed the law of God. We didn't do what she did. Can I add to that today? Because what did you do last week? Some people, what did you do last night? Jesus says in Luke, sorry, John 8, 10 to 11. This is after they've put down the stones of all left. The Bible says when Jesus had raised himself up and saw no one but the woman, <clears throat> he said to her, woman, where are those accusers of yours? Has no one condemned you? She said, no one, my Lord. And Jesus said to her, neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more. Church, how many people know tonight is what Jesus says that matters? Go and sin no more. I'm not condemning you. But lastly tonight, church, it is Jesus. It is God who justifies. Justification is a theological word that simply means not guilty. 
Another way to remember the word justification in the Bible simply means just as if I never sinned. This man, the Bible says, went home justified. The Pharisee, sorry, not the uh, tax collector. He went home justified. He wasn't justified by good works. He was justified by God himself. In Romans chapter 8, verse 33, <clears throat> Paul says, who shall bring a charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. See, not only does God remove the guilt of our sins tonight, God also credits to our account the perfect righteousness of Jesus Christ. He puts Jesus' holiness and Jesus' goodness and Jesus' righteousness, he takes that and he puts that on a sinner who hum humbles himself before a holy God. Here is this man, he walks into church, you could say, as a guilty, despicable tax collector. He has ripped off people. He's done all of this because of his own greed. He walks in a certain way, but church, he walks out of the temple, a righteous man before God. How is that possible tonight? He walks out righteous tonight because listen to me tonight, he humbled himself. If you want to, listen, if you want to impress God, humble yourself. Here's this man praying and saying where and saying all these things, all these accolades of things he's done and doesn't do, et cetera, and so forth, thinking he's impressing God. Humility impresses God. And because he humbled himself, he receives a righteousness that it was not his own. It was, it, it was, it was imputed. It was, it was credited upon his life. Let me give you another way to remember this before we close. And it's so important tonight. The way up is always the way down. And the way down is always the way up. And if you don't understand what I mean, let me read you, let me put it in Jesus' words, verse 14 of our text. For everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, and everyone who humbles himself shall be exalted. Tonight, if you're going to go and go and compare yourself, go and compare to yourself to Jesus. And when you compare yourself to Jesus' church, if you're wise, we are humble in ourselves. And in realizing we desperately need one, only he can give us tonight, church. And that is forgiveness and justification. Just as if I didn't sin. I'm no longer guilty. I'm now innocent because of Christ. Amen. Let's bow our heads and close our eyes tonight. Amen. <coughs> every head bowed, every eyes closed. We are living in a day and age of comparisons. We compare work, we compare clothes, we compare looks, we compare houses, we compare cars, we compare status. We even try to compare righteousness. But all those things tonight pale in comparison to the Lord Jesus. And I'll say tonight, there are only two ways to leave this building tonight. We're either going to leave unchanged and not willing to change. Or we're going to leave repentant and right with God. <clears throat> and the question of the Holy Spirit tonight is this. Will you go home justified? Or are you going to come home just the same way you left home you're here tonight you're not right with God you're not saved your sins are not forgiven friend there's nothing to be proud about there's no point comparing yourself with another fallen another broken human being like you you're both fallen and you're both broken it may be to different degrees but it's the same level 
But tonight, the Spirit of God is here to forgive. The Spirit of God is here to save. The Spirit of God is here to justify you. We've all sinned. <clears throat> We've all fallen short of the glory of God. We are guilty. Guilty is charged. But tonight, Jesus has the power to declare you not guilty. Jesus has the power to justify you. Not just here on earth, but when you die, heaven will be your home. Because of what he did on the cross. For your sins and my sins. And maybe you're here tonight, you've come in one way. Friend, you can live here a different way. You can live here a right way. You can live here a saved way by humbling yourself, realizing you're a sinner in need of the mercy and the grace of Almighty God. You can come in here like the Pharisee and, you know, spill off all your accomplishments which don't impress God. Or you can come to this altar like if, like the tax collector and simply say these words, Lord, have mercy upon me, a sinner, and God will go to work for you. God hates pride. God loves a humble man and a humble woman tonight. And I want tonight that any humble men, any humble women who are here tonight, who are not right with God, who are not born again, who have not given their life to Jesus. I'm not asking whether you believe in God. I'm asking whether you go to church. I'm asking that your sins forgiven. Have you made peace with God? Is heaven going to be your home when you die one day? If the answer is no, Jesus Christ is here to save. But you need to humble yourself and ask him into your life. Very quickly tonight, you're here tonight, you're not right with God. You say, Pastor, you pray for me. I want to give my life to Christ. Pastor, you pray for me. I want to know that when I stand before God one day, I'm going to hear those words, not guilty, enter into the joy of the Lord. That's you tonight. You want to pray and receive Jesus. Will you do one thing? Just lift your hand up and put it down tonight. We'll see that. We'll pray with you. And you can know your sins could be forgiven. You can no longer be an enemy of God. You can now become not just a friend, but a family of God tonight. Amen. You're here. You're not right with God. Come on, lift your hand up and put it down tonight. We want to pray with you. Count on the privilege. Count on the honor to lead in a very simple prayer. Maybe tonight you're just, uh, uh, you're raising a godly home in a Christian family, but you're not living for God. There's sin in your life. And the Bible makes it very clear that sin separates us from God. Will you humble yourself tonight? And will you ask Jesus to forgive you of your sins? He's ready. He's waiting. Will you respond tonight? Come on, lift your hand up. Here's my hand tonight, Pastor. Pray with me. I want to receive Jesus. Here's my hand tonight, Pastor. Pray with me. I want to come back home and recommit my life. I'm a backslider. I've been living away from God, but tonight I want to come back and make things right with God. If that's you, hands up, hands down tonight. God will see that and we can pray. Final time, unsaved, backslider. You didn't lift your hand before, but the Spirit of God is dealing with you right now. So I want to pray to receive Jesus. I want to pray to have my sins forgiven. Lift your hand up and put it down. I see that hand. God bless you, my sister. Anybody else? Don't be shy. Don't be embarrassed. God loves you. God loves you tonight. Don't leave here religious. That means on the outside you look a certain way, but on the inside you're away from God. In the inside you're doing your own thing and not God's thing tonight. God is ready to save. God is ready to forgive. Final time I'm going to say this. You're not right with God, but you've backslid, or you're just religious. You're going for the motions, but not living for God. But tonight you want to get your heart right. If that's you, lift your hand up and put it down. You didn't lift it before, but you want to do it now. Lift it up and put it down tonight. We'll pray with you. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. My sister, look at me. Look at me. Lift up your hands in the back. Amen. You lift up your hands. You want to pray? Amen. I want you to come. 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 Amen. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Can we have a sister from church tonight? speak to God's people today. I had to ask myself, who am I like? The Pharisee? All these things I don't do anymore. And all those things I do do that are good. 